we didn't talk very much at all around here, Stugatz, about John Tay Porter's lifetime ban for gambling, a pretty brutal time for the Porter family because uh, another brother, Coben, is getting six years in prison for a fatality in a drunk driving accident. And once it is that it's reported that you had in Colorado a gambling account that you were betting millions on and you bet on your team to lose, I think that that outside of crimes that result in prison sentences and the loss of your freedom, I think it's the greatest athlete crime that there can be. It's the reason you're getting a lifetime ban and you don't often see anything in the way of lifetime bans. Morally, sports considers this the worst of all the offenses, to be betting against your team, to be betting on your team to lose. And so this is a name, even though we were not familiar with Michael Porter having a basketball playing brother before this, this is a name that you will remember associated with this particular crime because there aren't that many lifetime bans ever in sports. But also I believe it's just the beginning of this, Stugatz, because one of the things that I think, and I wrote an article about this for ESPN the magazine many years ago, it would make sense if you have people who are addicted to competition, never mind gambling, just addicted to competition, it would make sense that a percentage of them would get addicted to needing action away from the 81 times a year they're getting it for, in this case, 12 minutes a night on a basketball court, <laughs> that you would have a desire or a need to compete at all times in a way that would be compulsive. It would make sense to me if this is just the beginning of this, that they will, like with Calvin Ridley, they will give a severe punishment to make sure that others in the future are warned that they can't do it, but it's not the nature of addiction and compulsion to be able to control it when you're somebody who has a, a problem with uh, addictive personality disorder or just need action away from things. I think, Sugat, you've noticed with young people in general, there is a need for more stimuli. There is just, in general, a need to get more from life than what you presently are doing at your job. And in this case, he was betting so much, Dugat. It's not just millions of dollars, which was a lot. He was making so many bets that there was clearly a problem with how much he needed competition, action. Well, I don't know about you guys, but in this room, we are of the consensus that perhaps if they threw out a potential lifetime ban for things like, I don't know, sexual assault or domestic abuse or anything like that, then maybe we'd take those crimes a lot more seriously. But I think when you go to the competition aholic angle here and say, you know, that's where the gambling problems come in, I think where people have a hard time believing or understanding this, and this is even NBA players, like, your competition desire, it's like those are fulfilled by competing to make the NBA. You have already accomplished a lifetime dream for so many other people, and you're going to risk it for, what, a couple hundred thousand dollars? That's why you got to the NBA for the money? Because there's so many other ways to cheat for money. And so the idea, if you, if you want this competition, go ahead and compete for a starter spot, my man. Go ahead and compete for something else to make you the best that you are and then see if you still have that itch to compete or to get, you know, the gambling, those gambling or those bets off, rather. Do you guys worry that the NBA was too strong, too harsh with this penalty? Because you set a precedent here. So whoever gambles on their own team is going to get a lifetime ban. Yeah. If and it Giannis was, does it, he's getting a lifetime ban. It was perfect the that NBA it was sure? a Jonte Porter. I know. But are you sure the NBA really wants to go down that road? Because who knows who's doing this? This precedent's been set before, though, in other sports, correct? You can't do this. This is something that is uh, – everyone knows this. This is not something – that is allowed and the punishment is the heaviest. And when you say morally, 
What does this say about other crimes committed? What it says is that those crimes that these leagues don't believe impact the integrity of the product on the court or on the field the way that this one does. They're telling you what the most important thing is to them by the severity of the penalty. And the answer to your question is, yes, if Giannis was betting like this, he would never play again. Hmm. I don't even think John T. Porter has an impact on the result of the game. I don't think he is affecting the integrity of the game when you're just a guy who goes out there for six points, five rebounds, and you're betting the under. So I don't think this is like a slippery slope situation where you're going to see a bunch of players doing this. This was odd to me, especially when you consider the family that he does come from. And I don't know, you know how they handle their finances, but his brother's pretty rich. And so the idea that you have to go and, you know, do illegal activity for a couple extra hundred thousand dollars just seemed odd. I didn't think it was the money. I thought it was the action. And when I'm reading about some of the reports, I'm thinking to myself, how much of a loser do you feel like when you bet on your team to lose and it wins? Like how <laughs> at, like, I, when you're headed home, driving home with your private thoughts, like how how much of an asshole do you feel like? when that's what you're driving home with. Like, I thought I had inside information. I'm on the inside. If Couldn't anyone be, should know, I should know. I can't <laughs> impact the result enough because I'm not playing enough. Can't feel more like a loser than that spot. It's a bad spot. It is. It's universally bad. Uh, did you have any thoughts, Izzy? And I know this wasn't the greatest game because Dallas – uh, God, it was hard to watch how Dallas lost to the Clippers. But Mark Cuban has said already, he's ready to call it, that Luka Doncic is the best Mav ever, that he is better than Dirk Nowitzki already. I know Stugatz's take, win a championship. He hasn't won a championship. Well, yet. you had me out here saying that I should defend – well, I said it – but saying that you should defend Luka sideways from the side because it's the only way you can actually get a challenge on that shot. But – then they go and score 30 points and a half. I did not think that was possible. And so I'm not going to reverse my claim and say I don't think he's the best map ever because I do think offensively he's more skilled than Dirk, even though Dirk's a slightly better shooter. But that one game was pretty damning. I wanted to read you guys a quote here from Tyler Glass now. I enjoyed watching him pitch for the Rays last year. He's with the Dodgers now, and he admits Who is it? Yes, everybody's with the Dodgers now. And his quote is, I'm a little radar slut. <laughs> hey, yo. He loves looking up at the board and seeing 99 miles an hour, 100 <laughs> miles an hour. Does he care if he gets hit? I, mean. <laughs> I don't think they put up a time on the board when you get hit. I think the only time you're seeing the time that's I'm put up saying, on the board. I'm just saying if Glass now deals something that's 100 miles per hour and it goes out of the park, does he care? He says, I'm a little radar slut, and that suggests to me that he doesn't care about anything other than hitting 99 on the radar. Everybody has their kinks, dude. Doesn't matter if he hits a home run or not. We're all little radar sluts. Whenever you drive past one of those little speed thingies and it gives you a smiley face if you're going the right speed or a frowny face if you're going too fast, you're always looking at that thing. You you're get never, the smiley, frowny face it. ones? Yeah, you've never seen Not one in my neighborhood. I don't think I live in a nice enough neighborhood. I, to be fair, I have never seen a speed radar in Miami. They just let you speed here. This is in other states, Izzy. There's a Mississippi State pitcher, Stugatz, who throws 99 miles an hour right-handed and 95 miles an hour left-handed. Come on. It's impossible. It's not impossible. <laughs> it's a thing that's So he's happening. getting lit up from both sides. 99 and 95 isn't that fast anymore. I've told you this. Startled that the Oakland A's have a little radar slut who looks up at the board and it's 103 miles an hour. Focus on one arm, man. Come on. You should get Tommy John right now on both arms. <laughs> Just get it on both arms right now. Premature Tommy John. <laughs> wow, if he could space him out, he could like pitch righty this year, get the Tom TJ done. Yeah. Uh, next year, yeah. A little switcheroo. Yeah. Do we have anyone here who was excited, blindsided, or curious about the fact that out of nowhere, as a surprise, a Taylor Swift double album made an appearance over the weekend and sold more than a million copies in the first 24 hours because um, she's the biggest thing in entertainment? And I don't know at this point, outside of maybe a couple of soccer players, how many people are more famous than her in the world? It's a fair question. Um 
I don't listen to Taylor Swift's music. I, I'm very like neutral, leaning positive Uh-oh. towards her in general. But Sounds like you're setting up for I'm getting here. the sense that people don't like this album. Wow. Is that correct, Chris Cody? It's a love album. I'm a, I'm about seven or eight songs in. Uh, a couple catchy ones. It's not, you know, it, the first time you hear an album, it takes me a while to like really decide how I feel about music sometimes. So. I'm kind of, un- I know it's not exciting to hear. I'm, I'm kind of undecided. Is it because you're thinking you're waiting for the rest of the people to react and then think that way? No, it's just like with music. Like, I don't like, it, it takes me like four or five times listening to a song sometimes to like really decide if I really like but it But you're or not. seven or eight songs in. How many songs are there? There's like 30. 30. That's too many. That's, uh, it's not an album. I was talking with Jeremy the other day. Careful. Like, what's the strategy nowadays? Because I would think that you break those up into two albums and you're making more money. But I guess now with algorithms and downloads, you just want to throw 30 songs at them and and hope a few catch. Wait, you're thinking put 11 away for another album for another day? I was thinking... That's a heady play. I'm with you. Right, but yes. I think the strategy nowadays is the more songs you put up, the better chance you got at the more streams, the more downloads. So it's kind of like... I'm going to go ahead and guess that however Taylor Swift is doing it is probably the right You way. think she's a volume shooter? She's I'm, not I, going for I like hits? She has, that is what she's doing. That is the strategy to volume shoot. I mean, 21 to 30 songs on an album, that's a volume shooter. They all can't be it's good. It's literally exactly right. what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying they're not all good. They all... I mean, she's a great songwriter, but... The key, she's hoping to get seven or eight. But you're not sure yet, you're saying. I I haven't listened to it. I'm just, this is, I've read a couple reviews and I'm like, huh, these are not as nice as I was expecting. Apparently it's the relationship before Travis, because this is like a heartbreak album. The Matty Healy one, right? So, yeah. Whoever that guy is, I still don't know. Was there a (laughs) time people would sit down and just listen to albums when they came out? Yeah, you get your vinyl record, right, Stu? You'd listen to the A side and then you'd flip it and you listen to the B side and Mm -hmm. then your friends would come over. It was a better time. You'd have people come over and that would be like your weekend? Well, no. I mean, I would get like, you know, Mars Hotel, Grateful Dead album. I would put the whole thing on. I'd listen to the entire thing. It wasn't 21 songs, though. Like the Dead, they would put out eight to ten songs. They yeah, knew their music was going to be good. Twenty minutes long. It would still yeah, be six so? hours long. What's the perfect number? Because I, uh, I was someone here suggested that I should listen to Olivia Rodrigo, and I decided to do that. And then I found out that that wasn't something that they actually liked. Same thing with what? Billie Eilish. Like, Coogs played this prank on me where he's like, I love Billie Eilish. You'd really like Billie Eilish. So then I started listening, and I was like three or four songs in and sending him, like, updates on how I felt about the Billie Eilish songs. He's like, I don't actually like Billie Eilish. So I wasted my time on that. What a strange prank. <laughs> what kind of people work around? That's just weird. It's what are odd. we doing? Juju, put it on the poll, please, at Levitard Show. Does it take you four or five listens to decide whether you like music or not? <laughs> It is time for Stu Gats to share his game notes. No one in the media will tell you what happened better than my boy Stu. Weekend observations brought to you by Miller Lite. Fighting through it, Chris. Great taste. Just 96 calories available for delivery. Dan, we wait for it every year. And knowing you the way I do, I think you'll agree it's a top five week on the sports calendar, a week where all the so-called experts will gather in Detroit to tell you everything they know about Joe Alt. Plug and play, great wingspan, a motor that never stops, Mel Kuyper Jr., smoke screens, and Dan, just like that. Make no mistake about it, draft week is back. Motor City. Ish. Ish. Joe Alt is phenomenal, by the way. If you say so. Plug and play? Oh, yeah. Motor City is where they should hold something like this, given how often (laughs) someone's going to say he's got a motor that doesn't stop. (laughs) Dan, you know what time it is in Milwaukee? Game time. Wow, you're on it. For Monday. Pretty good. Dan, the Knickerbockers. You know what the H in Jason Hart stands for? Hustle. It stands for Hart. It's Josh. (laughs) Josh Hart. Called him Jason. I just started watching. (laughs) That McBride kid is good. Mitchell Robinson. Four blocks. The blockness monster. 
How do you get Josh Hart's name wrong uh, on you your know. team? Jason was it because Jason Bateman was at the game? I think so. Oh, well, this is annoying, right? The celebrities <laughs> coming out here, Bateman looking like a werewolf. Like the New York celebrities coming out here. This part I can do without. Sorry they had fans in the stands at their playoff game. While everyone argued whether or not the Knicks should or shouldn't get the number two seed, you know what Tom Thibodeau was doing? I do not. Getting his team ready to play. Tibbs. The yeah. home teams. Getting Maxi sick. He's getting Maxi's doubtful because he's sick. <laughs> and Bede's hurt. And it's Maxie's all happening, sick. Dan. Yes, it's happening. <laughs> I mean, Jason Hart. The home teams went 14 0 this weekend in the NBA and the NHL. Hey, playoffs. We're waiting. Let's go. How about we start a series? Shea Gilgis Alexander. Do it against the Nuggets. SGA. He's not playing the Nuggets. Yet. Well, I mean, get there and then do it against them. Okay. I mean, but he got a victory against an eight seed with no Zion Williamson. Stop singing in commercials that makes me want to throw my TV out of the window. <laughs> I like that commercial. <laughs> Terrible. Jeremy Taché tweeting, quote, Tyler Hero is going to do the thing this postseason. I could feel it in my bones, unquote. If the thing is being a mess on both ends of the court, then he's most definitely doing the thing. The praise is pouring in for Jeremy Taché. Somebody writes in, I'm a lifelong Heat fan, and Jeremy makes me hate being one. Someone else <laughs> writes in, I've always hated the Heat, and Jeremy makes me feel proud of that fact. <laughs> The golfer that always has to play one last hole, even if it means putting his headlights on his golf cart on so he can see the ball. Do me a favor. Get a life and call it a day. Go home. Aren't you that guy? Yes. I was playing with that guy last week, and that guy said, hey, stick around. I said, I want to go home. It's dinner time. He said, no, stick around. I said, why? He said, I need your headlights. Come on. Headlights on a golf cart, huh? Yeah. Yep. Two Americas. <laughs> Anthony Edwards, 33 points, nine rebounds, six assists. Dan, you know what the A in Ant Edwards stands for? Arrived. Awesome. Okay. But what about do it against Denver? No, he doesn't uh, have to do it against Denver? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, but because he's not also playing Denver the same way that Shea Gilgis Alexander? Just Shea, yeah. Okay. Unimpressive victory for Shea. All right. Just say it. Minnesota, impressive victory. Agreed. Durant, mm -hmm. Booker, Bradley Beal. Mm -hmm. Beal. Jesus. What a waste. It's not good. Okay. That's all I have for it. Bradley Beal is not good. He's okay. Not the real deal. Tough day for Heat fans. Tough weekend for Heat fans. Having to watch Tyler Hero do that. And Dame Lillard do that. What could have been? Salvador Perez doesn't see black and orange when he plays the Orioles. He just sees red. Salvi. Man United. Survive in advance. Man U. Houston Astros. Nine games under 500. Dusty Baker. Hot seat? <laughs> Wait a second. What? Dusty's not, He's still not there. their manager. He's not. Wow. <laughs> that explains everything. Bring him back. Who is the Astros manager? You ask too many questions. <laughs> you don't like the follow up? Dan? It's one of the first things that uh, left in terms of sports knowledge when I started clearing out space, baseball managers. <laughs> and numbers, jersey numbers. He's the numbers. most famous Astros fan, Dan. I gotta look it up for you here. Guy Fury. Oh no, that's a good one. I made that up. DeAndre Jordan is a nugget. The most famous Astros fan is Travis Scott. Hmm. Astro World. Congratulations to Father Time for getting its first victory over LeBron James in the fourth quarter against Denver. First victory. The Bruins have beat the Maple Leafs all five times they played them this year. 
You, of course, know what the Bruins have, right, Dan? Their number? Yep, the Leafs' numbers. <laughs> they do. Proud of you, man. <laughs> There's nothing like Madison Square Garden in the playoffs. The Mecca. Shohei Otani now having the most home runs by any Japanese-born player in the Major League Baseball history, passing Hideki Matsui. Godzilla. I only put that in there to say Godzilla. To my Jewish friends, Tariq Cohen, Anthony Schwartz, and of course, A.J. Dillon, I wish you a happy Passover. Pesach, the Festival of Lights, Quadzilla. If you're wondering if Jackson Holiday has done it in the majors yet, he has it. One for 30. Overrated. The guy who takes his shoes off on the airplane. Just go f- yourself. <laughs> it's not your house. It's not my house. It's not your house. It's not anyone's house. Keep your shoes on. I'm cramping. I'm laughing too hard. Slow down, Stu. Sorry. Matthew Kachuk with a goal and an assist. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Classic Chucky. What Drew Holiday does doesn't always show up in the box scores. Top five NBA players who what they do doesn't always show up in the box score. You certainly aren't going to pick five current players. You're going to take five players for all time, right? Yes. Number five, Eric Snow. I mean, nothing showed up in his box score but wins. Not really. He went to the finals with Eric Snow. That's right. He's not wrong. He played a whole lot of other years where they didn't make it to the finals. (laughs) That's a good point. Patrick Beverly. Pat Bev. Thank you. That was number four. Number three, George Hill. What's that face, Izzy? I mean, it's a good list so far. All right. Is anybody still playing? Number two, Shane Battier. That's the one I knew was going to be on the list, Dan. You knew that one was going to be on there. And number one, Bobby Portis. That man shows up all over the box score. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, but sometimes he doesn't. Touche. Thank you. Here come the Phillies. Mookie Betts being in the top five of the National League. For average, hits, and RBIs, the M in Mookie Betts stands for MVP. He's so good. They're so good. They're 13-11. and 11. They should be ashamed of themselves. A team that is that good, where Betts might be their second or third best player, even though he's going to win the MVP, they should be better. 13-11. and 11. Braves lineup is still better than theirs. Ooh. The Dallas Mavericks. Missed 18 of 20 shots in the second quarter. You know what they say, right, Dano? You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And apparently, 90% of the shots you do take. Did you get that one, Dan? Yeah. Stash this away in the something to ponder file. Are the Bucks better without Giannis? Oh, come on. No need Where's to discuss file? now. Just stash it away for a rainy day. What do you mean? Oh, come on. Headline. Dan Patrick reveals interest from potential successors for his show. Dan, let's talk. DP. Ice. Underrated thing. Put it on the poll, Juju at Levitard Show. <laughs> Is ice underrated? Have a drink with ice, and then have one without ice. And tell me it's not underrated. Hmm? The things you do while driving around the Midwest on a gummy in the passenger seat of a car. Top five underrated things. Number five, Michael Jordan's passing. Number four, Michael Jordan's work ethic. Number three, Michael Jordan's defense. Number two, Michael Jordan's mid-range game. These are just all of the underrated things in the world? Yes. 
ice, and then these things. Okay. <laughs> Number one, Michael Jordan. Dan, the Metropolitans. Michael Jordan is underrated. Oh, he is, yeah. Okay. He won a NASCAR race this weekend. <laughs> He's underrated. You don't think that he is? No. Yeah. I think that proves it. Hmm. Congratulations to the Rams, who for the first time since 2016 have a first-round pick. That's nuts. <laughs> they were all in. We made a big deal. They were all in. They won the championship. They were all in, remember? <laughs> the C in Caleb Martin stands for Code Red. Scotty Scheffler, do me a favor. Save some wins for everyone else. He's made something that is very, very difficult look easy, and I can't stand it. Another thought I had driving around the Midwest on a gummy in the passenger seat, how is John Franco not in the Hall of Fame? Most saves by a lefty in Major League Baseball history, four-time All-Star, a sub-three ERA. I will not rest until John Franco is in the Baseball Hall of Fame. And by not resting, I mean talking about it today and forgetting about it tomorrow. You were not going to rest if Dwayne Wade left the Miami Heat and played for <laughs> anyone else until you blocked all of his abilities to get a so tired. statue yeah, outside of the arena <laughs> and you immediately forgot about it. Do as you see it up yet? I mean, I mean, the idea that work behind the scenes. All, you, all you do is rest. I need some rest. Franco's would be a great name for a pizzeria. Death, taxes, and Joel Embiid being questionable in a game where the 76ers really need him. Nick fans chanting, we want Boston at the end of game one is peak Knicks fan and why everybody hates us. We're on to Boston already. Weren't they still yelling bleep Trey Young as well? Weren't they also <laughs> they doing were. that? Wasn't there a bleep Trey Young <laughs> chant that made an appearance? Jason Bateman looks like that because of a role, right? He's he's doing a role. That's or he's just showing off that he can grow all the hair because all of his friends are getting old too. Mm. Hey, people, making mock drafts. Stop putting hypothetical trades in. You're confusing everybody. Uh, Bill Barnwell put out Jesus. the all-trade first-round draft. Yes. Oh. I love it. You do? I love it. No. Uh, the Giants trading up for McCarthy, though, Stu? What about it? Oh. How about I trade you a fifth, and you give me you shuffling off to hell. Speaking of hell. Wow. Or Bryles. Dan, those are the weekend observations. The draft is an ever-expanding thing. Uh, ESPN is in its last year with the draft. I am curious if wow. there will be a lot of people that try and wrestle away the draft from ESPN. One of the most popular things that Pat McAfee does is his annual draft extravaganza where he's adjacent to the draft and talking to Brock Lesnar and an assortment of others. And last week... Uh, he debuted and announced, McAfee did, that Bill Belichick would be uh, performing with him this Thursday. Bill Belichick had his choice of jobs in the broadcasting field, I would imagine. I would imagine that there was no shortage of opportunity for him there. If you saw how he appeared on McAfee, he did so with six Super Bowl trophies behind him. As there's a report <laughs> on ESPN of uh, his failed job hunt in coaching. And I read but did not see, Stugatz, that McAfee did not ask him about that. And I think McAfee is someone who is proud of doing it his way. And there are many people that I've talked to in the, out, uh, in the athlete space, including Stephen Jackson and Matt Barnes, who say that they want to protect relationships. 
And I believe that this is a change going forward that you're going to have to get used to in exchange for the access, someone asking questions who doesn't feel beholden to ask what it is that you think should be asked on behalf of the audience or journalists or anything else. And I don't suppose that anyone will care that Bill Belichick was not asked about uh, the report from Seth Wickersham, Don Van Nata, and Jeremy Fowler about Arthur Blank uh, taking calls from Bob Kraft saying, don't trust Belichick. But I would have liked to have heard Belichick's response to that. I was going to ask, do you care? So you do care. I Well, I care. but I, I understand that. But too. I don't believe that the audience does. I don't believe that people, as long as they can get their access to Bill Belichick, care what has to be exchanged for that. But yes, that is something that I care about. I would like to know that there are no restrictions, but that wall has not only tumbled, it is now, again, Stugatz, Belichick could have worked anywhere that he wanted to. Right. He chose Except to, the NFL. Right. I'm so, <laughs> in broadcasting, I'm assuming that he had his choice of jobs. No doubt. And the one that he chose was a, a safe space that uh, Pat McAfee is making a safe space for a whole lot of people. I remember we left here last week, right, while he's announcing that Belichick is going to be on his show, and Caitlin Clark was on his show when we left here, and she was saying, I'll do a weekly show with you. And I do wonder, because there are a lot of people questioning whether or not, or there were a lot of people questioning whether the McAfee thing will work or not, and they're paying him so much money, Stugatz, that they're putting all of ESPN and Disney's resources behind making sure that that show succeeds. That show is going to succeed yes. uh, for a number of different reasons, but the investment will make it so that it cannot fail. It's not something that will fail unless Pat McAfee doesn't want to work there because he's not even under the employee restrictions that other employees would be under because he's renting his stuff to them and they're making the maximum investment. And this is where I tell you where some of the new media can absolutely change things where you won't even notice, you won't notice or care what is given away in exchange for the access because the access is enough these days and i would say generally speaking the media's curating with people the job the media does right it's either not trusted or disliked very few q ratings are lower as a profession than media in fact go ahead and put this on the poll at lebitard show uh, most despicable, more despicable popularity rating, media or lawyers, media or sports agents. Like, what do you look at, media or uh, used car salesmen? Because lawyers I is pretty good. No, but I believe I believe media has probably taken out all of them now. I believe that there are very few occupations right now that uh, need more change and have uh, less public trust than the media. So you're saying I walk into a restaurant, a couple friends, few people in there recognize me at their table. They're saying, oh, that asshole over there, look at him, that media jerk. Is that what's happening? Is that what you're saying? That's I, tough for David Sampson because he's both. I think that most people, if you just ask them, I don't think that's the way it presents itself. They don't that hate, would make me they, sad. They don't hate you on the spot. But if I ask them, if I said, how do you feel about the media in general? And it's, is the response going to be positive or negative? If I give you the choices, if that's how I frame the question to everyone listening to this, how do you feel about the media? Is neutral an option? Put, put all three of those up. How do you feel about the media? Positive, neutral, negative. Because I think negative, especially if you put that up on social media, an existence that is negative by itself. Like social media exists, I feel like, just for people to argue about things. It depends on the person, though, right? Like Charles Barkley, it's going to be, yeah, I love him. But I'm not talking media about is a that. It's very broad. Like, that includes Fox News. It includes CNN. It includes NBC. Right. It includes but I'm not us. making any of those distinctions. I'm just saying, how do you feel about the media? Hard stop. 
Yeah, Dan, they hate us. I'm trying not to come to terms with that every single day of my life. But yes, people hate us. They're also mad at us right now for giving the floor to Brian Scalabrini earlier. They're not happy that we allowed Brian Scalabrini on our show, even though we had I mean, booked that before he said any of what it is that he said. It's not our fault, and Izzy went after him. I mean, and apologized. I mean, he's not going to hear an attack the way he did on any other show. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm glad we had him on, even though I love you, Brian Scalabrini. People are saying, like, we platformed him. Yeah. He's got a pretty big platform already. Izzy, do you actually listen to him every day? Because you said that at the end. That every day I'm weird. in the car in the morning. Yes, I don't believe I'll you. I turn on Frank <laughs> Isola and Brian Scalabrini. I do. I believe. I believe. I that be- it's too specific to not. Frank's my guy. Come on. Yeah. Frankie Ice. <laughs> and you want your basketball fix in the morning, and you know they're going to be chewing up all basketball things. And for the record, I do not dislike Brian Scalabrini. Yeah. Listen to him all the time. Russell Wilson, speaking of something that is a note off that people receive poorly, uh, threw out an honorary first pitch over the weekend, Stugatz, and not terribly surprisingly, brought out his own baseball glove. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> Dad move. Adorkable. I don't think a lot of people are looking at that and saying that is something that they would do. <laughs> Stu got I know, but Russ was excited. He's throwing out a first pitch. He was practicing. He wanted his own glove. He wanted to feel comfortable. Did he throw a dart? I mean, I don't actually know. I should say I should make a qualifier here. I don't know if it was his glove or he just grabbed a glove that was somebody else's. Fake news. This is why people don't like the media. Mm -hmm. You just allege something and now you're backtracking already. I don't know whether it's his glove. I don't know which one. I think that's worse. Right. Bringing in your own glove. Bringing in your own glove from home is worse than just grabbing one off of the bench. He'll be on McAfee later. We can find out. It's very on brand. I mean, and didn't Rob Gronkowski last week just go up and yeah. spike a ball instead yeah. of, I think this is now going to become a thing. Whatever you're known for, just do it on that mound in five seconds. CJ Stroud, horrible, horrible. Was warming up to throw a first pitch. Right. Embarrassing. Really? Yeah. You have to worry if you're yeah. the Texans. Chris Cody just asked, why was Russell Wilson throwing out the first pitch at a Pittsburgh game? Yeah. We had to remind him. Yeah, I forgot what team he plays for the Steelers. <laughs> like, he also random. did batting practice. Do you think like they're like you want to throw out the first pitch? He's like, but I want to bat also, and they're like, well, that's not. The Pirates are like, yeah, works. you can come on our team. We're not going to pay you either. Well, can the Broncos pay for that salary too? <laughs> How much do you think they enjoyed it at Fenway Park that Gronk got out there and just spiked the baseball at his feet right there and just immediately <laughs> threw it right down? Ah! <laughs> Greatest night in Red Sox history. <laughs> it's so good. It is. So so grunk there. He, he, he thought he was muttering to himself as he went up there. Watch this. I'm going to make him crazy as soon as I do this. Stugatz, are you excited? For? Uh, draft week. Of You're course be I am. Detroit-ish. Yes, yes, around the area. Yes. Yeah, if I were to tell you that there's only 13 confirmed prospects that have, have said they're going to be at the draft so far, how would you feel about that? Uh, it depends on who they are. Mm. Mm. Quarterbacks? Caleb's one of them. Yeah, there's three quarterbacks that are confirmed to be there. Okay. Is this just because of Will Levis last year? So, like, no one wants to go and be the I embarrassed so. person that's hanging out at the draft just to not get drafted the first day? There's been a lot of Will Levises over the years, right? Wasn't Aaron Rodgers one of those? Yes. There's been, yeah, there's been a handful. But, I mean, I think if you're an agent, you're probably like, eh, it's not a good look. You don't want to be that guy. Are you asking, Billy, because Stugatz is going to be eager when he's in the Detroitish area to talk <laughs> to prospects and he's only going to have, uh, you know, a dozen to choose from? Yeah, I mean, I, I would think everyone would want to go, right? I mean, even if I'm drafted day two, I think I'd want to be there. I mean, I'd be embarrassed, but whatever. I'd be fine with getting embarrassed. I'm only going to be drafted once by the NFL, right? But waiting around and having America feel pity for you is something that you could probably avoid if you're not doing a Times Square draft or a Las Vegas draft or a California draft, and it's Detroit-ish. Yeah, Motor City. Yep. Who do you think is the worst person that could ask to go to the draft and be fine with being embarrassed? Like if there's someone that's rated like a third-round pick, but they're like, you know what? 
I'll be there, Kamish. And they're like, no, you're not allowed at the draft. Like, how far down can you go in terms of picks? Like, the 47th pick, could they go to the draft if they wanted no to? No kickers allowed, right? I think it's only first round picks that go. They projected, don't have projected, projected first round picks. First yes. I like the idea of like a projected sixth round pick, just being like, Sam, I'd like to go. Yeah. Sam Hartman's <laughs> like, I'm going to go. <laughs> I think I might get drafted higher. I, I mean, this could be avoided if they just told the people producing the television show, hey, if there's someone just sitting in the back holding their phone. Don't show them. Maybe don't show them every time they come back Notice from commercial. Maybe just like, yeah, I don't know, talk about someone who has been drafted. Who are the, uh, did you say 11, Billy? 11, 13? What did you There's say? There's 13 that will be there. If I, Sam Hartman did show up, though, I'd be tempted to take him. I mean, the NFL would be thrilled. <laughs> You'd be tempted to draft him? Oh, yeah. I do like the peer pressure of the player being there in attendance, and you feel like, I feel bad. Bad for him. Like, He's got such great there. hair. Yeah. I didn't realize. I've got an idea. Sure. You're gonna sell a lot Sam of Hartman goes to the draft. Anybody that falls lower than they're expected, you just put the camera on Sam Hartman. Mm. Just have him wave his hair around, you know, and then that way you're not thinking about, oh, poor such and such who should have been drafted top ten. Oh, we really thought Jaden Daniels was going to go number two, and now he's still on the board. But, ha, ah, Sam Hartman, hello. Look at that flowing hair. Nick's- Bo Nix would be crazy to attend the draft, right? That guy could go in the first round or the sixth round or not be drafted at all. Yeah. I know. I mean, He's one of those people that I see, and I don't know why we're doing mock draft talk. I'm sorry, Dan. I feel like you're going to – I just saw you look I'm, at me I'm, and you I'm were I've seen him in mock drafts angrier. those two guys. Yeah. I've seen him in the first round, and then yeah. I've seen him not in the first round. Yeah. I don't know. J.J. McCarthy, I don't know if that's a smoke screen. I don't know J.D. Daniels or the Commanders. I don't know what's going on. Can you look up for me, please, <laughs> Bo Nix's collegiate uh, touchdown to interception rate, please, because I think it's pretty uh, extraordinary. I also wanted to play for you a bit of instigation to got that uh, Knicks fan Taylor brought in. He said that uh, we are now feuding with WFAN. Evidently, we said some things uh, when you were close to taking the program director job here recently at Mm -hmm. WFAN. We said something. You'll have to forgive me. What was the name of the two guys, the two bald guys that uh, Billy was confusing, and he said they were the same guy? Oh, Sal Licata and Brendan Tierney? Okay, yes. Evidently, we're feuding with them. I have not heard this sound, so let's hear this sound, please. Or have that battle with that fan base or mm-hmm. mix Miami, especially knowing that the Knicks, you know, probably could handle Miami because, you know, we hate, you know, like I was thinking about it with uh, what are those two guys who do the show down in Florida? Uh, Lebeturd and Ugats, I think. Oh, yeah, Ugats. Oh, yeah, yeah Ugats. Ugats. Lebeturd and Ugats with those guys like, you know, they're big Heat fan, I think. Mm-hmm. Are they? I, I think. I mean, they're in Miami. Lebeturd, I think, talks about Miami. Ugats is a Heat fan? U- he's from Ugats. Here. I, but, I mean, is he, but he, he, has he embraced the Heat culture? Yeah, well, he's, from, he's from here. He wanted to be here, but he left. And, you know, he thinks he could come back and whatever, but he can't. He's just not good enough. So <laughs> Lebeturd and Ugats. I think that he like it would have been fun to be able to beat those, you know. That would have been beat fun. Miami, you, you know, know what so, I said, so who would I rather face? Philly. You know why? Those fans have more heart. <laughs> He did the same thing that you did at the beginning of that. Like, what are those guys' names? The guys down there, what do they do? I'm not beefing. Dan did it better. I'm not beefing with Sal. I don't care. He came at you, Stu, the most there, I, I think. Did, but I don't care. But he's first on the chopping block, right? Like you're, He would have been, his yes. job. Yeah. yeah, I might take it again now. I might call him after the show just so I could fire Sal. I've been hearing Lebeturd since second grade. Turds are funny. That's a funny insult. I'm sorry, Dad. Turd is funny. Agreed. Turd. The turd. (laughs) Referring to someone as a turd at all times is universally (laughs) funny. Ugats was weird. Yeah, that was not. That's a classic sports radio move, though, where you don't really, you know their names, but you give off like you don't know their names. I did not know. (laughs) I believe Dan. I did not know who they were. No, but he knows who we are. That's my point. Yes. You might not know who Sal is, and I believe you when you say that. He knows very well who you are, and he knows who I am. Do okay? they know that you wanted to fire them? Are you? Are those your list? Uh, are they I mean, in a time slot that you would want? They're in the uh, the midday time slot, and no, that's you don't want not, that slot. Yeah, that's <laughs> not who I was going to fire. It was Evan Roberts. I mean. <laughs> Evan Roberts, what time slot is he in? And I love Evan. I mean, I do. I love Evan. It's got to be the drive afternoon. Right? It's afternoon drive, yeah. <laughs> Evan and Tiki. They do a great job. In fact, I will say this, okay, Sal, so play this on your show. All three shows do a great job. It's why I wanted to take the job. That station is incredible, where you could put any two people in a four-hour window and have them talk about a bunt, and boom, 10 shares. It's insane. 
but they do a good show. So I don't know why Sal has beef with me. He always thinks I'm coming up to take his stuff. I'm not taking your stuff. I was going to be your boss. I don't need to be anyone's boss at this point in my career. I can be my own boss. You're not good enough to be the station director? I, what does I mean, that mean? I, listen, it's classic Sal, okay? Classic Sal, okay? Don't know his name. Leviturn, who God's uh, he, uh, tyranny playing along. Tyranny. I mean, please, if I did a remote, okay, if I did an appearance side-by-side against Sal and Brendan Tierney by myself with no promotion except a couple of tweets, I am telling you I would outnumber their promotion by at least 5,000 people. I said it, but I don't want their jobs. I wanted to help them become better at their jobs. That's all. (laughs) That's funny. I didn't want Geo job. That's too early in the morning. I did mornings, WFAN over the summer. The show was over. I had no idea what to do. What did I do? I took a gummy. I walked around the Lower West Side of Manhattan, sleeping by two. It was miserable. So if you did take if you did take the job, you'd be doing it for them. I'd be doing it for WFAN. Yes, you're a real Aaron Rodgers here, just kind of (laughs) taking jobs, try to mentor the young talent there. I, I was trying to take everything I've learned in the radio industry over a couple of decades and pour it back into a radio station that I love and host that I love. I do. I listen to those shows. I like those shows. You're so giving. 5,000 more, at least. Right next to each other. So, like, almost like if the two of you, like, let's say this is like a, I don't know, like an episode of Peanuts. Put them on the Blarney Stone on the west side. Put me on the Blarney Stone on the east side and see who gets more people. Go ahead. Just to be clear, though, you are are saying you'd send out a couple of tweets and 5,000 people would gather around you in New York. No, 5,000 more people than the (laughs) other guys. Yeah, That he would have 5,000. So 5,100. And they would have zero. Okay, so they'd have 100. (laughs) And all you'd send out is a couple of tweets and you'd get 5,000. Hey, Stugatz, I'm going to be at the Blarney Stone East Side. Come out 3 to 6 (laughs) p.m. Come out and hang out. I'll give you some sports takes. It wouldn't even be a live show. I mean, it's the stew signal. It's just a puff of smoke, <laughs> cigarette smoke out blue. over Manhattan, and people show up at the Blarney Stone. I believe that he believes it. Thank you, Billy. Yes, that's the key. <laughs> Barkley was just on with Mad Dog and called him Mike throughout. Oh, oh geez. Chris never corrected him. <laughs> Doggy doesn't care. <laughs> he just kept calling him Mike, though. His name's not Mike. That At some point, you would think that a correction would be coming. But Doggy told us this, that he's just happy that he's getting these guys on now. Because before he started doing first take, he couldn't get you on. He couldn't get Barkley on. And now he's getting a who's who of guests. And he doesn't care if they call him Chris or Mike. I mean, it's amazing. I'm not going to lie. I honestly thought his name might have been Mike. Like, I just know him as Mad Dog Russo. <laughs> oh, you weren't sure? Mike and the Mad Dog. I wasn't though. sure. No, I would never listen right? to Mike and the Mad Dog. I lived in South Florida. <laughs> I don't know, Stugat, if you have been watching. Are you mad at Sal? I mean, no. You're good? No. I mean, it's it's not very clever as as an insult. I've been hearing it since uh, since second grade. But, mm. I mean, I didn't hear. He, he took you out more... <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess being a turd is worse, but I've been hearing that one. For Do you a while. like Le turd less or Le Bastard less? Yeah. I got yeah, I got both of those since I was a, a little kid. I actually probably got Le turd more than Le Bastard though, probably because first graders aren't using bastard. Yeah, lot. one hurts more. Kids than like the poop, other. poop, poop. Wow, poop humor, humor. Tough one. Uh, it's interesting with Sal though, because I had a conversation with Sal and I told him this. I said, Sal. I am so happy for you because you, like me, listened to WFAN growing up, and now you are living out your dream of hosting on WFAN. That's what this station is all about. And it was sincere, and I meant it. You're fine. And he thanked me. Now, whether or not I would have fired him if I took the PG job is another thing, but I had that conversation with him when I was doing mornings with Boomer and Gia. And I really am happy for Sal because he has waited and waited and waited and then Carton left, and then Tiki went to the afternoons, and there was a spot open in middays. And even though that spot should have went to me, it went to Sal. And I am super happy for Sal because he has wanted this his entire life, and he is living out a dream. And I love watching people live out their dreams. I'm super happy for him. I really am. Whether or not he believes it is up to him, but I've said it to him a thousand times. 
I thought you were done commenting on this. I thought you didn't have anything that you had to say about any of this, that you didn't want to take anybody out. You, you, you actually showed restraint at the start of this. I did, yeah. What happened? I don't know. I mean, I like Sal. Dude. I'm getting older, you know. I don't want peace. But make no mistake about it. I mean, he says one more word, I will end his career. <laughs> Sometimes you accidentally <laughs> drop a diss track. <laughs> he could have just called you John Wiener. <laughs> It's better than who gots, right? If he you could have just called him Stu if, Gots. If, if, if he had been just Leviturd and Wiener, I think it would have been better than who gots. I don't even understand what who gots is. He's got built in insults in the name. Two of them. <laughs> Pick is. one. Yes. A now wiener. imagine it's me and Dan Blarney Stone, East Side. I mean, <laughs> you're in.